Welcome to another episode of the Sum Engineering Podcast. Today, very exciting guest, Yevgeny Putz, founder and CEO of CloudQuery. Hey, Yevgeny, really excited to have you on. Hey, Lars. Uh, thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. So, so we prepped quite a bit for this call and uh, lots of topics to talk about, ELT, infrastructure data. But let's start with, like, what does CloudQuery do? What problems do you solve? And maybe talk a little bit about the genesis of the company. Yeah, so sounds great. So uh, yeah, Cloud Query is an, started as a, an open source project. We are like at the very basic, uh, at the very root of that, we are an ELT framework, open, so open source ELT framework. So basically helping uh, move data from one source to another destination. So that's like the, the really like high level description of what we do and uh, we can go deeper in like what is the framework and like what is an ELT framework. Um, it's really started, so it's really started as an open source project exactly like two years ago, a bit, a bit more, um, even before we raised our SID round. Um, and it's really, we started just as solving like one use case actually, um, unrelated to ELT because we didn't un understand or like I didn't understand at the time that actually it is like we are going to build an ELT framework. So I just wanted to get data out of AWS APIs to a Postgres database so I can like analyze it there instead of like having, you know, DSLs or analyzing it in Python and memory. I just like wanted to have it in Postgres and that's bas basically it. And this is also was the first version um, and people, you know, seem to like it. So we doubled down on that. Um, but yeah, but as we move forward, you know, people asked for, okay, maybe can you do me another database or can you do another source? And we are like, wait, but if we build it, oh, so, so actually the problem that we are solving is not moving data from AWS. Postgres, we are actually so solving the problem of how do you move data from any source to any destination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then, um, it, and that's what turns you into an overall ELT framework, like any source and any destination. Before we go into that, can you uh, double click a little bit about getting or extracting AWS data? Like what, what data specifically are we talking about? Yeah, so uh, AWS, so we started with AWS because also I'm coming from like uh, the cloud world and the cloud security world and AWS in particular is an interesting uh, use case and a complex one because AWS has more than 1,000 APIs uh, or, and, and growing every year. Uh, and the data is, is more of a metadata is Th things like, like, it's not your like data from your database. It's just simple things like how many, you know, machines you have, uh, what are their configuration, how many buckets you have, how many, you know, users you have, what is their configuration. So it's a lot of made about like the infrastructure con configuration itself rather than the data in inside. So it's really the, the configuration uh, metadata and there is the funny thing is that you said, oh, there is probably not a lot of it. There is a lot of it, <laughs> especially lot of it. in big AWS account. There is a lot of it and there is no one single API where you can say, okay, like get me like, you know, give me all, all that. It's, you know, a lot of APIs, some of, sometimes they're not consistent. Uh, and because, because of that, it like this problem on itself is, is a big challenge to a lot of, you know, uh, companies, if they want to do some kind of analysis or anything, they have to always like write this on their own, like get like again and again to get their specific use case. So there is, so like, so we started by trying to generalize it better, right? Gen like transform all that information to a database, uh, where the data is structured and then you have a query language where you can, you know, query and people can, you know, do whatever they want because, you know, I can't know ahead of time what, uh, what folks want, want to do with the data. So like, yeah, the, be yeah. the best, the best we can do is, you know, just normalize it to, 
to a database. That's that's basically the the underlying solution. So so many questions that I I think we need to dive into. Um, let's let let's stay a little bit in the what, and then we'll let's move into the why. Why would people want to have this type of data? So you said I, I think this is an important distinction. People get this not always right. Like you're not collecting records from a database like a postgres or like an rds amazon rds or an amazon aurora right you're you would collect the metadata off that database like how is it configured how many nodes does it have whatever you know that that's what you collect correct yeah yeah exactly yeah that's important like we, we can get all the data from all databases to one database that's like a bit different problem and probably you, you don't really like like it's a different problem and you know we can discuss it as well but yeah it's just the uh, you know, like you said, uh, how it is configured, like how many backups per day it is doing, what versions of uh, those RDS are running, uh, when they started to run, um, you know, when they were created, when their last backup happened. Like th there are so many, you know, if you ever try to configure Terraform, right, or Bloomy, yeah. when you write the when you write the Terraform, right, then you have so many properties to configure. So those are you know, all the properties that you can, th this is how you create the infrastructure. So basically, yeah, yeah. that, that made the data about the infrastructure. Yeah. And so, so, so essentially you call the same APIs to extract data that a, a Terraform or a Pulumi or any infrastructure of code tool would use to deploy those same resources. Would that be correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah j just kind of the other way around. Like they usually do the create APIs and maybe make right. get, and we are like using a lot of the like list APIs, like get uh, like everything that is there and like transform, uh, and we are doing like the transformation and then sending to destination where, you know, Terraform and Pulumi just uh, do the create and then transform it only like to internal structure just to know what was configured. So they're like solving a specific like a big use case, but the specific one of provisioning rather than uh, right, yield, kind of ELD or inventorying. Right. And and you said there's over a thousand APIs and the complexity here is like AWS has all these different product types and, and not just AWS, right? GCP and Azure as well, maybe just at a smaller scale, but they don't talk to each other, right? They don't, they, in, in the sense of they don't align on the data they expose by their APIs, right? There's no, there's no single AWS API that allows me to get this data, correct? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, no. Yeah. Uh, and, and in GCP and Azure, exactly like you said, like when we talked about AWS, which is a big like challenge, uh, how do you like understand what you have, you know, analyze and do, do anything uh, at scale? Um, the same, it only grows if you have GCP and sometimes like some companies have like both, uh, like maybe one is more used, but you still have some footprint, um, in GCP and Azure, which is, yeah, it's, it's a very similar challenge with the APIs and metadata. Yeah. Data. So then, so you, you solved that problem. You've built with Cloudquery, you've built a framework that helps me extract this data, run the jobs right on whatever, you know, whatever cadence I want. Um, it's normalized. You flatten it out usually into tables. I think you also support a few other destinations like graph databases. We can talk about that. Now, um, can you share a little bit about, you said like, okay, we, well, you started, by, hey, I want this AWS data, we open sourced it. And then other people said, I want this data too. Um, what is the why? Can you talk about why people would want this data? Yeah, so I think because we started with AWS uh, use cases, then we saw a lot of, you know, it's kind of uh, a bias depending on what you build, like on what you build. So because we started with AWS uh, data, then uh, we saw a lot of use cases around, um, uh, like around security, uh, around um, cost, around governance. So, like platform teams trying to understand, okay, um, how many disks unattached to anything I have, okay. which I need to delete, um, or you know, how many like projects uh, I have with you know to like too many instances, like untagged instances, or like there is like infinite number of uh, things basically that you want to know, depending on 
or the organization or the use cases. And this is why basically you want like a query engine uh, that that you can query like any of those use cases, right? And you want the data in the database. Like it's kind of like the the best way to solve it in a in a generic uh, in a generic way. So yeah, so we saw a lot of like governance, cost, security, um, where platform teams like install install it and use it themselves. But also uh, we saw like secure like the platform or the DevOps engineers right run it, put the data, and then they kind of like tell, okay, now we make sure, like, we make sure we are running it, um, that, you know, it runs on a daily basis, that it works, that, you know, the machines are running, uh, that are doing the extraction and the database is working. And then, you know, the security team has access to that data so they can, you know, uh, work on their um, problems and solve their, um, like, uh, solve their tasks and the governance team can do their work with the same data and kind of like everyone can work uh, nicely with with the same data without like uh, running again the, the same transformation, the same like workloads, which is like also work like to make sure that the data pipeline is kind of running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and this sounds very very similar to to classic analytics and data lakes and the way we've seen it in analytics engineering in the past you know five to six years. Um, I'll, I'll, before we go into this topic of data lakes and ELT, um, you mentioned that these teams wanted to have this data to solve, you know, governance, security, and cost use cases. And we all know there's no shortage of operational tools, right? DevOps, SecOps, FinOps tools out there that acquire this type of data and give you an opinionated view on it, right? And um, so now why why do you think would all of a sudden these people now say, I mean, I, I think I know why, we all know why, but like, let's elaborate a little bit on why would people want this raw data um, versus using a tool? What's, what, what's the delta between the, those, those two paradigms? Yeah, so I think I think it's like a, just a classic um, industry transformation, and I think it's the same thing that happened also in the marketing. So um, it's kind of like actually it happens in um, in a lot of areas. It's kind of it's it's the bundling and unbundling of things. It's I think related yeah. to that. But um, you know, when ten years ago, like AWS started, or maybe even more now, like I don't recall the exact, but they started like with S three uh, APIs and compute a year later, maybe they had like 10 more APIs. Right? And then, yeah, like if you have like a one tool that so like, basically when you have five APIs, if you are a vendor that you kind of can come up with all the permutations of the use cases, you can say, okay, like I, I know all the queries ahead of time. So it's like, uh, the permissions on the S3, like number of S3, I can like build the dashboard. For, like I can already build the dashboard for you because I just know all the permutations, right? And I can build it for you. But then uh, when the number of APIs grows, then it stops, it kind of stops working. The vendor can't actually already uh, come up with all the permutations. There are too many. You can't come up with all the queries. Um, and you can't even maintain all the APIs anymore of the extraction. This is another challenge and kind of like then, then you need like, as the user, you need to look for another solution, which is like, you want to get the data and then you have to like you yourself, the user need to define the queries and the analysis and the dashboard because the vendor, they can't know what, what you need ahead of time. You know, you can have examples, but I can't know. I can't build dashboards for all the companies in the world. I have to give users, like I can give them a, like a head start, you know, this is like an example, but then the users need to have like access to the raw data to, to customize it. Mm -hmm. So, so this is almost like the why for cloud query, because everyone needs to have this data. Now we have a growing set of APIs. It becomes more and more complex. And so at some point, everyone does the same famously called undifferentiated heavy lifting. There's no point, right? That has created the need for a horizontal layer. And that horizontal layer would be cloud query in this case. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. We we will be focused on the like if you talk about the modern data stack, right? Will be the ingestion layer. So we ingest the like we are solely focused on uh, making sure we have all the APIs covered for the plugins that we maintain. Uh, giving users the ability to contribute to those plugins back because uh, like there are a lot of those APIs, uh, building the framework and giving the users an easy way to build more plugins on top of Cloud Query because we can't like we can't maintain all the APIs. So we're really like it's kind of the unbundling. We are solely focused on the ingestion layer, and then once you know it is in the database, then you can use like different so other solutions which are focused on whether it's transformations, things like DBT, uh, whether it's uh, visualization, like things like Grafana or Superset, um, because it's just two different problems which are like each of them is, is big enough, right? We can't like inside Cloud Query, we can't, we can't really develop Grafana and um, and then like and Cloud Query, like we are already uh, yeah, working hard, so it will be too hard to, to develop also a, a Grafana, yeah. Yeah, you got your hands full collecting data. Um, and, and we had uh, Julia from DBT on. We talked a lot about the modern data stack. And, um, and I think that's a very interesting aspect because so the modern data stack has developed over the last, let's say, four to five, six years, right? And we kind of all know the vendors, the prominent vendors in that, you know, you mentioned DBT. Uh, we had Julia on the podcast. Um, in my experience, so, so what may be super fa familiar for, you know, classic data engineers and analytics engineers who work with marketing and sales data, we haven't seen that as much yet working with infrastructure data. And in the concept of, you know, infrastructure data and the modern data stack, have you seen that there's a change or like what change have you observed? Do people, are people realizing this concept can be applied to infrastructure data? Yeah, I think it's like in, in progress. I think it's like not everybody realized it yet, but I think like people start to realize that, you know, it's just the like, this is the technical solution. So eventually, you know, if there is a problem and there is like one kind of technical solution to that, I think everyone will eventually come to, to the same conclusion. Um, but yeah, I think like it took time because it, it is something new, uh, in the infrastructure space because the, API, like, because the cloud is like much newer than, you know, cloud APIs are newer than Google analytics APIs, like Google yeah. analytics was before that. So it just, it just takes time. Um, so yeah, like people are now, you know, security engineer, platform engineers are like, oh, okay, we have to, you know. Uh, learn SQL or, you know, run, like, see how LTE, uh, how data tools work, like learn about modern data stack. Um, cause it's, uh, it's kind of the, the best, uh, like kind of the best solution to, so to solve a lot of the issues. Yeah. It's, I mean, SQL is simple. Everyone knows it. Uh, every, everyone knows it, but doesn't necessarily know it well, but, um, that's a different, <laughs> that's a different problem. And, but it gives you all this flexibility, right? And um, so, so do you have a few, ex so I, I let, let's just call it an app, right? Even though it's a SQL statement, but do you have some examples for use cases, like little apps that, that your customers or users have built by using Cloud Query data? Yeah, sure. Uh, I can, I can also sh like share screen uh, if you want. Yeah. Please. Okay. So, so I can go like from the demo, like from the, uh, some of the examples that we have, and then I can do just like a short, um, or actually, you know what, let's, let's, uh, let me do a quick, uh, really quick demo just to, let's do it. Yeah. Just to explain. So let's start with maybe the, just the homepage. Yeah. So cloud query is open source project. Um, it's all written in go. Um, so it is like a single binary. And every plugin is a single binary, so it's quite easy uh, to deploy. Like Go solves a lot of problems, so it's easy to deploy. You can run you know, data pipelines without kind of without Docker, without Docker in Docker. You just run it wherever you want. So let's do um, a short demo now. 
uh, of Cloud Query. Okay, great. So we saw the GitHub repo. Now we're looking at your terminal. Yeah. So as I said, like Cloud Query is a single binary. You can install it like with brew or wget, and Cloud Query will um, like will download the plugins, uh, which are also like single binary uh, written in Go. So to configure Cloud Query, you need to specify which sources you want and uh, which destination. So here, in that case, we want to sync from um, uh, like from AWS source and like the, the example configuration you can find it on our docs. So basically, it's, it's really like a, a copy paste. In that case, uh, we are syncing from an AWS plugin with a specific version, and we are syncing like AWS EC2 uh, instances um, to a Postgres destination, and we configure like the Postgres destination uh, here also to like a specific uh, destination, specific version and the connection string. Um, and now we can, we can run Cloud Query Sync. So it will take all the like, configuration in the current directory. Uh, and I can like also specify specific files and it will start, it will start syncing um, from my AWS Playground account to my local uh, Postgres instance that is running in, inside a Docker. Um, so yeah, I think like just AWS EC2 instances because I didn't want it to take uh, a while. Uh, and now like, let's go and, um, you know, just run a few queries inside our Postgres. Um, I'm going just to use the PSQL shell uh, just for brevity, but, uh, but, but basically you can, you know, use any, oh, one second. Yeah. Any nice tool like reset or, uh, yes, like super sad Grafana, Metabase, anything like you use to, to run uh, queries in a, in a nicer way and also like share them with other team members, but like, let's run, uh, like get all EC2 instances. So like we get all the data about the EC2 instance and all the columns, it is like quite hard to read. So let's like in, in the terminal. So let's like just ask about a specific, uh, like ARN. Okay. So I can see like all ARNs of EC2 instances. Uh, and I, you know, I have all, all the other data from my EC2. So I can also, uh, join, um, like with other data. You know, for example, uh, you know, get me all EC2 instances, um, like one I can do like tags, for example, let's do, let's see, do I have like tags here? Yeah, I have tags, right? So I can qu query, so I can query like where tags, um, um, like where tags are something, right? Or I can join, you know, um, yeah, where tags contains a user that is in the, like in the user table or. Like do what do whatever basically I want to do because all the data is here, uh, but let's do something a bit more maybe a bit more exciting. So uh, we have uh, a view like an example view that we created here. Um, so on our website we have a view that we like created um, that creates like one view that contains all the resources, right? So. You can run it just like the same way with uh, PSQL. Uh, the view, like I copied pasted here, like create view dot um, The like I can show it real quick, but honestly, it just goes through the tables and creates a view with uh, like ARN and ID. So what we can do now, uh, we can normalize. <laughs> you know, all, all our resources relatively easily just with one view, like one SQL query. Um, so let's do like AWS resources, right? And now we can see the ARN like uh, tags and account ID of all resources. So for example, let's do like, yeah, something that we can see more easily, like region tags, right? So account ID. All right. So, so this is like a bit more interesting, right? Like AWS resources API doesn't exist in AWS, but we were able like to build a really easy, uh, a view, a new table that gets the data from all other tables. 
and normalize it to something that, for example, we want, right? To see all resources, their errands, their account ID, and I can like visualize this now pretty easily because I don't have like to deal with 600 tables, right? So that's, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I think that's like an example, right? And I don't have a Grafana instance installed here, but uh, yeah, you can like go to our website as well, right? And, and see like there are some example like Grafana dashboards that you can customize that are, are built with those views. Yeah. So I, I think there, are, so this is a fascinating example because I think you showed a few things or you showed a single thing, which is a terminal. And as a developer, you know, I have, I can use my credentials to log into our AWS instance. I get all the data. I can install a Postgres instance locally on my laptop and I can start now extracting data and I write my SQL queries locally. There's no, and everything is open source, right? Obviously, except for the infrastructure, but, um, I mean that like we've done this now for what like five minutes and you showed me <laughs> getting and that five minutes covered getting data setting up cloud query creating a view and and just generating insights right so this is a massive shift from maybe drag and drop tools where as a developer i'm fully empowered now to get this data yeah yeah exactly uh yeah it's i think it's really like at the end it's it's the right i think tool for the job right it's a data Prob like the, the fund on the fundamental level, it's a data problem, and um, if you use like the right tools, which are like you know databases and data is, is a hard thing. You know how you store it, how you query it, and people were working on that for for a long you know uh, for forty years. Uh, so this is kind of like the best way that you can store uh, data, right? And you don't need to like use Postgres specifically, right? You can use um, SQLite. Uh, so you will just you know, configure a SQLite destination in a similar way and use SQLite if you want to do just like local things or, uh, and we can like talk about that as well, like configure an S3 uh, destination, right? And use like a more, a more data lake approach, right? Query it. Yeah. Yeah. Be before we do that, and I do want to get to the data lake, um, what what type of knowledge do I still do I need to have about the underlying schema and the data I get back from the API? Like how much of an expert do I need to be for those individual APIs? So uh all our like all our tables are documented. Um uh, maybe let, let's share uh let me share the another tab tab here. Um so all right. So all our tables are documented in uh, our documentation. So like you have, you have all the tables. So depending on what's, what, what do you want to query? Uh, you actually can see also all the, like all the columns and their type. Um, so yeah. And, and you have like also the original API, uh, that, you know, you can query. So. You know, that's the original data and like what we try to do, right? We, we basically try to like keep the API and the tables as close to, to each other. So you have all the data and then you can do additional transformations, uh, as you want. And this is where the modern data stack comes in. And I could, I can still be as the infrastructure engineer, I can still be the expert in the type of data we extract, but for users downstream, I can build transformations and remove some of that complexity and and basically get, it's almost like a metrics layer for infrastructure i just give the i give you exactly what you want and that's the only thing you need to understand about this whole thing yeah 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 exactly mm -hmm. okay awesome so geez we have covered a lot of ground um what's missing i think uh i think I think data lakes is really interesting. I, w I do want to talk a little bit about more about different data sources you started pulling in from SaaS sources, um, how that came about. And then maybe overall, let's shift then to Cloud Query as a framework. Like what's the future of the company? Um, I don't know, where do you want to start? Do you want to, do you want to yeah. do, go into data lakes first? Or, uh... Yeah, yeah we, can, we, can, uh, we can, we can talk about, so, so yeah, we, we also like, 
we started with AWS, but uh, I can uh, sh- like share my uh, screen again real quick, right? But we have now um, um, more than um, like 20 source plugins, including things like, uh, you know, GitLab, GitHub, um, Launch Directly, PagerDuty. Uh, and we also have like a growing set of partners that they maintain their own plugins, right? Like uh, Scaleway, Simple Analytics, analytics, um, Yandex cloud. Uh, so yeah, so, so it's really like, it, it, it's really any other, uh, infrastructure or analytics APIs, uh, as well that you want to bring to, to the database, right. To the same format and store the data there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so there's, there's some SAS tools in there pretty engineering centric, I would say still, but where, where at, at, by no means a limitation, right? But yeah. um, in my head, fast forward three to four years, I feel like we're, we may almost converge. Like, look, there's an existing world of ELT tools, right? And they have their market, you know, Cloud Query has, you have your market, but how do you see that evolving? And, uh, and, and, the, and maybe that's the framework aspect. Like, what do you see happening for, how do you see the future of, of cloud query in that world? Cause you know, there's, there's other tools that, that may be doing some of this already. Yeah, for sure. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of tools, uh, in the ELD space. And I think it will, uh, like definitely converge, uh, like it, it's really hard to to predict, right? Because there are just so many uh, parameters um, to be able to predict it. But yes, I think it's going to converge because it's the same underlying problem. Um, And I think part of that, like part of the problems is still like we have a lot of, you know, issues around like data uh, interoperability and we have issues like how do we maintain so many connectors what is their format? Uh, what is the framework that people use? Uh, like how one vendor will, you know, um, how one v- vendor will maintain all connectors in the world, you know, and, and it's a lot of like also technical and business challenges. And I think uh, they will eventually like be solved because, you know, the industry is moving forward. And I think part of it, one, on the connector side, I think vendors also, a lot of vendors, like we already see it even in our partners, will be maintaining their own connectors. So for example, because business incentives are aligned uh, there. So for example, if you're like, uh, uh, Stri- like even AWS, but like even Stripe, you want to enable your users to sync uh, data to uh, any other destination or daily because it's a big use case, right? And if you don't have it, like you either need to implement it yourself, like the whole data pipeline and connection to all databases, or you just implement a source plugin to like, doesn't matter if it's call query or any other like ELT framework. And it's kind of similar, like really similar how uh, vendors maintain Terraform uh, provider, right? So they don't engineer their own Terraform, like right? they maintain just the Terraform source plugin and then users can provision, uh, uh, you know, with that. So I think vendors will eventually maintain, like, um, maintain their own, um, source plugin to ELT vendors. I think that's on the, uh, like on the business side, I think where, where things will evolve. And then, um, yeah, there are like still some technologies, I think around data that are evolving, um, like yeah. that I think it will help, it will help ELT vendors solve a lot of those, you know, issues. Okay. And so, and, and maybe if we, one thing we haven't really talked about yet is how cloud query is implemented. You chose go as your language, correct? Is, can you talk a little bit, let, let's dive a little bit, let's go back down into the stack and talk a little bit about your technology so- choices. And, you know, you talked about sources and destinations. Like, can you talk about some of the choices you've made and let's start maybe with Go, why Go? Yeah, so Go um, solves a lot of 
problems in like the around deployments and like operational uh like op operational issues right so go you like you don't have a runtime you can run it easily like without any docker um on you know ecs on ekas it's it's more performant for concurrency as well like in a lot of places so it it, it is was kind of a natural choice when you're working with like data and especially if you want it to be deployed in a lot of places, right? So because we are not a backend, like we are not a backend, we don't have like, you know, UI or something, but it is like just something that you can deploy and scale. So Go was a natural thing that, okay, we want it to be easily deployable and, you know, scalable. So this is one thing. Um, and then like, I can go into like how, like the architecture, uh, just yeah. in high level. Yeah. yeah. So Pe people love architecture on the show. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. So, uh, let's, let's maybe, uh, let me see if I can, I have one diagram. On, we have one diagram in our website. It can also help. Um, one second. I'll... All right. So yeah, it's, uh, it's really high level architect <laughs> architecture, but, um, I think it, Makes the point. So basically we have external APIs and then we have like the cloud resource plugins that they get the data from the APIs. The user, the, those source plugins are using cloud query SDK, which helps, uh, like helps you as a developer to define the schema, uh, transform the data to a cloud query type system. And then all this data is sent via gRPC to cloud query CLI. Right. And the like gRPC part here is important. Like it has to be basically like gRPC or some kind of network protocol because we can't bake in like all the source plugins in the world to cloud query CLI. Right. So yeah. Yeah. we want to give developers the ability to, uh, or users the ability to, you know, write their own cloud query plugin and download like a community plugin and still use it. Right. So this is so. Cloud Query plugins are basically like like small servers running locally. Uh, they're sending the data to uh, Cloud Query CLI, which then in turn is basically just like a small small proxy, uh, and it sends the data to a destination a plugin, which is also a server because we can bake all you know destination plugins to to the CLI, and then um, the destination plugin is doing the other way around, kind of like taking Cloud Query. Uh, data, which is uh, transformed to cloud query type systems. So we know how to transform every type of that data to destination, right? So, because it's, it's already like transformed and it's a like strongly typed um, cloud query type system. Uh, and we put it in a, like in the database, depending on the, on the plugin. Um, so that's, I think like in really high level. So it's like, it's gRPC, um, it's, uh, which makes it pluggable. And then, uh, a lot of things basically around the cloud query type system, which makes you like make, makes the whole thing work. So you transform it to one type system. And then it, once it's transformed to something that we know what it is, then we can, uh, transform it in a generic way to any other destination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then looking forward, I assume you're going to be doing at least two things. Um, number one, support more sources. Uh, number two, support more destinations. Um, you, but there I may even see a limit. I feel like it's going to converge quickly into probably like a handful of destinations, you know? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, destinations are mu like much less. We, like we already support like more than 10, but yeah, destinations is like on order of magnitude, uh, smaller yeah. than the number of source plugins and APIs. Yeah. Yeah. And I expect that people will gravitate towards S3 or Google, Google cloud storage. On, on data lakes. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Um, what else should we know about cloud query that's that's interesting that I haven't covered that we haven't covered so far. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we, I think we covered quite, um, 
went in good in good uh, detail like the high level architecture of clock three and how to run it um and yeah i think i think that's i think i think that's pretty much it in you know in if you go in our docs then you can also like um there is like everything in our docs is um yeah open source and uh, you can basically just try it try it out locally uh and also like we have a discord uh, as well where you know, if you have any questions or you are stuck uh we are happy to right. help um uh, yeah yeah i think it's fascinating to see how we're seeing things come full circle you know the modern data stack or cloud warehouses started 10 years ago the renaissance of sql bringing software engineering principles to working with data and now we're bringing it back these whole the whole modern data stack back to infrastructure and now we need to teach infrastructure engineers to work with these principles i think it's fascinating it it is full circle definitely like it's uh SQL is a bit like uh, JavaScript, you know, you hate it, but I mean, it's, you're stuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> never, never bet against SQL. Never bet never against bet SQL. <laughs> exactly. So like, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the problem, the fundamental problem is, you know, querying data and, you know, it is what it is. So you know, SQL or like, even if it will be something else, it will be still querying data. So. Like the the fundamental problem doesn't go really go away of yeah. query querying data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I feel like we have enough. Uh, there's even enough stuff we can talk about in a future episode about how this compares working with some of the existing monitoring and logging tools. But uh, I think we we covered plenty of ground today. Um, so to reach you, people can go to cloudquery.io. See the docs. There's a link to your Discord server. Um, you're pretty easy to find in your Discord server or on LinkedIn. And uh, I think this was an exciting episode. Um, looking forward to the show notes and publishing it. I think we'll we'll see a lot of uh, interest here in Cloud Query. Uh, Evgeny, thank you so much. Um, all the best. And I would say this concludes this episode. And uh, we'll we'll check back in in a few months. Yeah, thank you very much, Lars. I appreciate you having me on the show. It was great awesome. talking to you. Thank you, Afghani.